Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and it's time for a Luthier's Quick Tip. If you'd like to support my guitar building YouTube channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. A link is in the description below. Now on with the video. In this episode of Luthier Quick Tips, I'm going to continue with my ongoing explanation of how I design or shape the tone of the guitar pickups as I'm making them. And what I talked about in the last episode was uh, I began to cover the subject of magnets. And I mentioned that there are two factors that I consider when selecting a magnet for a pickup. Uh, the first is the composition, which is what I talked about in the last episode. And then the second is the strength of the magnet, which is what I'm gonna talk about in this episode. So let me bring you in a little bit closer and hopefully I'll be able to explain this in a way that makes sense. Okay, so what I have here are some examples of different Alnico magnets. I've got three bar magnets and some slug magnets. Uh, this is an Alnico 2, uh, an Alnico 5, and an Alnico 8, and then these are Alnico 5 slugs. Now the bar magnets are typically what you use in a humbucker or a P90 pickup, and then the slugs are used in single coil Strat and Telecaster style pickups. So the way I measure the strength is I use a device called a Tesla meter or a Gauss meter. And this one in particular is, I'm not sure the brand I can't read Chinese, but the model number is the TD8620. And I'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to check one of these out. These, these run about 90 bucks, and they're really useful when it comes to making pickups and helping you to get an idea of how strong the magnet is. Now, the way the strength of a magnet affects tone, we have to use a rule of thumb, and it's similar to what we use when we measure inductance, although... Uh, the rule of thumb is kind of switched. It's the opposite. With inductance, the higher the measurement, the warmer and darker the picker, pickup will sound. The lower the uh, inductance measurement, the brighter it'll sound. With Gauss, however, it's the opposite. The higher the number, the brighter the pickup will sound. The lower the number, the darker it'll sound. And different Alnico compositions will yield different levels of um, magnetic strength. So I'll switch on the meter. And when I turn it on, it is in its default mode, which is measuring in millitesla. And I prefer to use Gauss because that's what most other pickup makers use. So we have a pretty good idea of what that number is in relation to tone. So if one pickup maker is telling you his Alnico 5 magnets are, you know, at 700 Gauss, I can compare that to what I get, and it's, it's just an easier way to do it. So I'll take my Alnico 2 magnet, and I'll place the tip of the probe, which is connected to the meter, right onto the edge of the pickup. And what this meter is telling me it's, it's telling me the, the pole that I'm measuring and then the level of the gauss. And in this case, the, uh, I'm measuring the south pole, which is showing about 440 gauss. Then, in comparison to a, an Alnico 5 magnet, when I measure the south pole, we're seeing 780, 770 to 780 is roughly what we're getting. And you, as you can see, that number kind of bounces around and that's because this probe is really, really sensitive. But it gives you an idea, a, a pretty general but, but uh, usable idea. And as you move it around, you can start to see what your strongest Gauss readings are. And as I said before, the higher that number, the brighter the pickup will sound. And the lower the number, the warmer it'll sound. So when you look at an Alnico 8 magnet, you can see that the Gauss is starting to jump up around 1100 Gauss, so it's substantially stronger. And that's why an Alnico 8 magnet sounds so much brighter in a pickup than an Alnico 5 or an Alnico 2. And then with a slug magnet, it's basically the same type of measurement. 
and we can see that the Zalnico 5 magnet, fully charged, has a measurement of around 875, 880 Gauss. So this is going to yield a pickup that's going to have uh, some pretty decent brightness to it. Now, the nice thing about using Alnico magnets is you can charge the magnet and then degauss it to whatever level you want using a fairly simple homemade jig. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so what I have here is a simple magnetizing jig. And what it consists of is a machinist's vise. And then attached on each jaw is a three inch long, half inch by half inch square neodymium N52 magnet. And I believe those are just about the strongest commercially made magnets that are available. And I'll, again, I'll put a link to all this stuff down into the description below if you're interested in making your own jig, but it's, it's pretty simple. And what I've done is I've oriented the magnets so that I have on this side is the south pole facing in, and on this one, it is the north pole facing in. However, once the magnets are charged, this side coming out will be a north side, and this side coming out will be a south side, if that makes sense. So the way I use this is I simply take, this is a, an Alnico 5 bar that has no magnetic property whatsoever. This is a steel ruler and it, it doesn't stick. If I were to measure the gauss of this, it would probably be in the 20 gauss range. It's important to remember anything with iron in it is going to measure some gauss to it, but there's just nowhere near enough in this bar to work in a guitar pickup. In fact, this steel ruler would have some gauss properties to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the magnet right up against this N52, and then I'm going to close the jaws of this machinist vise until the other magnet contacts the other side, and that's all there is to it. That bar is now fully magnetized. So I'll open up the vise, and then I will remove the magnet. And this can be kind of a challenge because those magnets are so strong. And you have to be kind of gentle as you do this because you don't want to bang the magnets around. That can affect the gauss level. But once I've done that, what I can do is set my jig aside and then I'll bring back over my gauss meter. And I always, whenever I use this gauss meter, I have to make sure that the jig is well away from it because those N52 magnets will affect the gauss reading on this. So I don't want it anywhere near it. But then what I can do is I can check the measurement of the gauss. And here you can see we're back up to a roughly a 670 Gauss reading. So that's pretty close to being fully charged. Now I could go higher, but what I would need to do is add a couple more neodymium magnets to my jig, which I can do. Uh, I, just, I just haven't done that, and I don't think it's really typically necessary to do that. But uh, if I wanted to, to take this charge up to, say, eight 900 Gauss, I could do that with a couple of extra uh, neomagnets on each jaw of the, of the jig. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the strength of this magnet. Because let's say, for example, I had made a humbucker which had an inductance of around four Henrys. I would know that that's going to have a little bit of warmth to it, but let's say I was afraid if I added a fully charged Alnico 5, that might increase the brightness more than I want it to. Uh, Let's say, you know, it might be better to go with like an Alnico 2 magnet, but if I didn't have an Alnico 2 magnet, what I could do is I could degauss 
the strength of this Alnico 5 in order to get the, the uh, effect of the magnet strength a little bit less so that it's not going to be so incredibly strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to degauss this. And the way that I do that is I take a stronger magnet, like uh, uh, the one I like to use is a ceramic eight magnet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push the two magnets toward one another so that the north pole of the Alnico 5 is running up against the north pole of the uh, uh, ceramic eight magnet. And what that does you feel the resistance as you push the two together, but as you push them together, that ceramic magnet is going to reduce the strength of the Alnico 5. So we were at like 670. Now when we test it, we're clear down to 460, 450 in that range. So you can see just uh, bringing those two magnets together significantly reduce the strength of the Alnico 5 magnet. And you can do that with any Alnico magnet. In fact, you can run an Alnico uh, magnet up against a uh, neodymium N52 so that you have the two, the north uh, pole of the Alnico 5 running up against the north pole of the neodymium, and you can absolutely demagnetize your magnet. So you can really play around with the strength of the magnet. So not only do you have the composition to, to, to be aware of with regard to how it affects the tone, but you also have the strength of the magnet. And by varying the strength, you can affect the tone. And by following the simple rule of thumb where the stronger the magnet's gauss, the higher that gauss number, the brighter the pickup is, and the lower the gauss number, the darker or warmer it sounds, you can really fine tune and dial in the tone of your pickup. So another thing to be aware of is the stronger the magnet, the higher the gauss measurement, the less sustain your guitar can potentially have because with a really strong magnet, like an Alnico 8 or a, a ceramic magnet, it, it's actually reducing the amount that the uh, string can vibrate within the magnetic field. It sort of acts like a mute. And the stronger that, that pickup is, or the stronger that magnet is, the more it's going to slow or uh, reduce how much the string can vibrate, the, the length of time that it vibrates, so you end up with less sustain with the stronger magnet. So if you've got a guitar where you're having some issues with sustain, one of the things you can do is you can swap out the magnet and um, with a, with a uh, weaker strength magnet, like an Alnico 2, 3, or 4, and get better sustain. So that's something to think about. Okay, well, that's all the time I have for this episode, and I hope that this short series on designing the tone for electric guitar pickups is going to be useful to you. Um, maybe it'll help inspire you to make your own pickups, or perhaps it'll help you to understand why the pickups you currently have in your guitar aren't quite sounding the way you want them to, and some thoughts about how you can make some changes so that they will sound the way that you want them to. At any rate, uh, if you have any comments or questions, post them down below, and either I or one of the other knowledgeable uh, members of the community out there will chime in to help answer them. And if you enjoy watching videos about making guitars and don't subscribe, hit that subscribe button, click the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. And if uh, you'd like to show some support for the videos that I produced, because, you know, after all, my YouTube channel is free to watch, so um, I really count on the support of my viewers, uh, I would encourage you to head over to eGuitarPlants.com and purchase either uh, a set of plans for building a guitar or one of the different kinds of tools that I use. And either way, even if you don't make the, uh, the guitar or the tools that you purchase the plans for, 
uh, your purchase really does help out as far as helping me to improve the quality of my videos. So uh, until the next episode, take care and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.